Hi guys, and we're back again with our part two for beginners of coding a HTTP web server in Delphi. So this is where I left you guys off, and I'm going to try and do this as quickly as possible because it seems that after five minutes, everyone gets bored and leaves the video. So we're going to do this as quickly as possible. We're just going to make our T our memo bigger on our form, and we're going to get rid of the stop button. And we're getting rid of the stop button because when you close the application, it will stop anyway. Um, which is not good practice, but oh well. So we're going to make a lot of changes really quickly. So we're going to get rid of that line um, because we're going to have to change everything. So we're going to need two new T list strings, one called T request string or T request header, and we need one called T file header. Now these two list strings are going to be used to load, one is going to be used to get the header that's sent to us. Previously we were just looking for one part of the header and then we were ignoring the rest. But we want the rest of it now. So we have to create these two variables, so simply call them as t request header dot um, equals uh, t string list dot create and that will create them and we're going to do the exact same for the file request so why are we doing this one because we want to catch all of the HTTP header that's going to come to us instead of just one line and two because the way we were loading the um, reply file so the file requested um, was confusing some people so we're going to get rid of it so when you go to the other end of the function, we need to free out both of these variables. It's important to do this. Uh, I believe it starts destroying your memory, if not. I don't know. I've always been told it was bad. So we're going to free them back out. And now we're going to get rid of most of this. Why are we getting rid of most of this? Because people have told me it's confusing. So. This was, I don't, I don't think any of you guys actually saw most of this because the video that I was going to post, I had a few friends look at it and they were like, yeah, that's confusing as death. So here we're going to do a while true and we're going to get, we're going to check whether raw data is empty. Um, we're going to set up again. And why are we doing this? Well, we receive it in lines and therefore we need to loop until we run out of lines so we're going to call t request header which is our t list string and we're going to propagate it with uh, the current raw data and then we're going to stick raw data in straight after it so as we add one it will look for the next so then again we're going to, we're going to do another um, for loop this time instead of a while loop and we're going to count the number of lines that are in our t request header and we're going to take one away and then we're going to begin and we're going to actually encapsulate all of this code and you'll see why in a minute because uh, we have more of the header than we're used to and therefore we need to check exactly what we've got um, and then extract key information so the user agent we were extracting from raw data we're not going to extract it from raw data we're going to extract it from our header and we need to tell the um, variable that we want it out of this string so as we go further as this code loops back and forward it will increase the current string it's using which is i and therefore we'll go through all of the strings that are listed in our t string list so with all that done we are going to space it out slightly because there's going to be another function in there later and we are now going to do path so we're going to do if the file exists I'm going to check whether the part um, we need our folder which is www and we're going to do get current directory 
we'll get current dir plus the string that we've set the folder name to we're going to need to give it a slash there and then we're going to plus to that the path that the HTTP request has given us and then we're going to begin and this is where our T um, file request comes in so we use our T file T file request I spelled it wrong and we're going to call load so we're going to load our file out and we're going to copy the same variable string that we were using in the line above so that we load our file. Next, we're going to do a pause. So next we're going to jump into the history. And uh, for the, those of you who don't know this, that there is a history of all your code um, in a project as long as you don't delete the history folder. So we're going to copy back some of our uh, code. I'm not going to revert it because it will delete some of the code we've already put in. I'm going to dump it back in and we're going to quickly make it look right. You don't have to do this bit, it's just aesthetically pleasing if you do. So there's a few simple changes we need to do here. We need to put our variable name in front of the text. and then we need to clear the file request why are we clearing the file request um, simply to ensure that there's no data left in it in case it gets called again you don't want like more than one page loading on top of one page and so next we need to do the else and this is where we're going to do our 404 page so we're going to copy our uh, string again with the if, uh, without the if, we're going to put not in front of it. So if we do not find the file, then we want to load our um, 404 page. So we're going to check if the 404 page exists, because we don't want to be loading a load of junk. Or we, I don't, I don't think it would load anything. It just send bank blank. So we need the current directory plus the variable that is the folder name and the name of the file, mine's called 404.html and if we come down here back into our history we can grab the code for the 404 like that so we're going to jump back in, we're going to paste that back in we are going to set our variable in front of this, so t file request dot load file And we're going to have to change that because it's no longer that directory. And we're going to need to do our git current dir again. So this gives the program the adequate um, like disk location. And then we need to change the variable here again. So once done this, we just need to clear our t file request. And I'll do some debugging. Oh wait, I think we, yeah, we might add some lines. So after a small about debugging, we forgot a few things. So we're going to add this feature up here that says that if our t line, if our t request header line, so the string we're calling from the variable is empty then we just want to continue and what that'll do is it will like skip this loop so if our if our variable is empty it might be one in the middle um, it will skip and carry on the loop and we're going to give it a slight sleep um, just so that we can catch it using the um, break line So that's pretty much it for now. 
we'll give it another debug it's got an error in it oh we need to put the um, square brackets in and I to tell it which string we want out of the bunch so after some more debugging yes we did more debugging we're going to add some lines and uh, we're going to use them to tell the GY what's going on so this one is in the um, the path so we're going to put file requested and we're going to put the path and that way the user can see what files are being requested and then we're going to do the same with the user agent user agent that was used you could set a session ID for these and uh, just a, a variable that was constantly counting up to tell you which user agent goes with which um, URL request but I'm not going to bother as this is a video for beginners so we're going to come down to the start button and we're going to add another uh, memo line and we're going to say server started these are all pretty self-explanatory little captions that you're adding and then um, lastly we're going to add one to the 404 page because we'd like to know where they error you could make this a separate mem uh, se separate memo on the uh, GY really simply just by pasting and you know, just dragging a new memo in and changing the memo from memo 1 to memo 2 or whatever you'd named your memo and then you could have your errors separately So after a bit more debugging, um, we'll come back. And so we're back after our debugging and we missed a few lines out. So we missed the exit out and we missed the closed socket out. And we missed that out on both the 404 and the, oh, and we missed the end. We moved, I have to move an end. We left an end here and it should have been down here. Um, this is the close we missed and this is the exit we missed and that's just going to annoy me so I'm changing that so now if we run it we can hit the start button and we get the server has started now if we jump back over to chrome we can jump into gibberish url and we get our 404 page and we can type in our index page no we're just going to type in gibberish for more So we still get our 404 page, it shows our 404 page is working well. And now we just stick in our index page and we get our index page. So it's just that simple. Um, if you want to read through the code more in depth, uh, the link will be in the description. This is what the GUI looks like after it's been posting. So if you want to look at um, the code more in depth, the code, the source code will be in a Google link in the description. Ignore that. I closed it halfway through a request. Um, if you need Delphi, the video will be at the end of the this video. At the end, there will be a video shown on how to get Delphi for free, completely for free, no cracks, nothing, just completely for free. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. Due to the recent changes on face on YouTube, uh, subscribe subscribers mean everything at the minute. So if you are logged in, please subscribe. Here are two videos that you might find useful. One is the how to get Delphi for free, and one is the first video to this second video. Until next time.